Hi everyone, Miss Art here to give you my book review for the Fairest by Marissa Meyer. Now this is a bridge book in one of my current favorite series, The Lunar Chronicles, and this is a character study, basically, of the main villain, Queen Levana of the Moon. Now if you're not familiar with the Lunar Chronicle series, I highly recommend going out and reading the first three books, starting with Cinder. Uh, this series is basically a sci-fi retelling of classic western fairy tales. Cinder is Cinderella, Scarlet is Little Red Riding Hood, and Cress is Rapunzel. So I definitely recommend picking those up in sequence before reading Ferris because this book does contain some spoilers to the main series and you'll appreciate the, the characters that are mentioned in here much more deeply if you're familiar with the series already. So if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. I know sci-fi, fairy tales, what the hell, trust me, it works. So Ferris acts as a bridge between Crest, the third book, and Winter, the fourth book, which is coming out later this year in 2015. It's focused squarely on Queen Levana, the villain of the series, who is the embodiment of the evil queen slash witch <laughs> from Snow White. Up to this point, we don't know much about her character other than the cruel act she has performed. But this serves as our insight into her childhood and explains why she is the way she is. And what it breaks down to is Queen Lavana had a very sad childhood. She had very little positive parental guidance or affection from anyone within her family or even outside of her family. There was only one person who ever showed kindness to her and that was Everett, one of the key characters in the series and in Queen Lavana's life. But this lack of love and affection and a traumatic event that occurred to her that was caused by her sister, Cinder's mother, uh, really lead to her just debilitating lack of self-confidence in her looks. And this tragic event and the lack of care from her family really lead to a gnawing hunger within her to gain affection and love in her life. So she ends up not only constructing illusions through her glamour to make herself more beautiful to others, but at the same time, she's becoming an expert at deluding herself with fantasies. And ultimately, the way she chooses to perceive reality ends up costing her what she really wants, love in her life. So it's all very tragic, and it was fascinating to watch Queen Lavana convince herself of how she saw reality. It was kind of disturbing and relatable because I think we've all tried to convince ourselves of something, but Lavana takes it to the next level. And we see that through all the terrible choices and cruelty she inflicts, she honestly thinks that what she is doing is to the benefit of her kingdom. So she feels very altruistically in that respect. Overall, this study of her character is really effective in this novel, and I think it does strengthen the series overall. And along with learning more about our main villain, we also get to see very important elements of the plot taking root in this book. The virus plaguing Earth, the genetic modification of these beast man people, uh, the shell controversy. It's just all fleshed out and creates a, a, a more solid foundation for the series. And it serves very well to set up Winter's character as we learn more about her family and her history and position within the court. So it's just a perfect transition into the final book of the Lunar Chronicles. No! I honestly can't imagine getting as much from Winter if I hadn't read this ahead of time. This it really is integral, I feel like, to understanding all the undertones going on between Winter and Queen Lavana. And I gotta say, I really feel bad for Everett, who's at the heart of Queen Lavana and this book. I feel like he really just made the best out of a terrible situation he had no control of. His character is really well developed and brings a lot of positive diversity to the series, and other side characters are also equally well developed. Especially I enjoyed getting insights into Cinder's mother. We see her as being very cool, and yet we get hints that she might have had a softer heart when it came to her daughter. Overall, this book does answer a lot of questions such as 
what Queen Lavana looks like without her glamour and the glamour she chooses to use. And we also get questions raised such as why did her sister die of something that doesn't affect royalty usually. There's a lot of mystery involving that so I'll be curious to see how everything's tied up in the final installment. But yeah, overall, it was a, this is a very good book. If you're a fan of the series, it's it's more of the same goodness. So <laughs> do yourself a favor and read this. I typically am not even into novellas, and I really enjoyed this. So that's it for this book review. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. I always appreciate that. And yeah, check me out on all the social medias. Um, I'm active on Tumblr and Twitter and all the good stuff. Links below in the description box. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!